some people are being too harsh with sisters who focus on a career. Okay. Because um, most of us living here are immigrants. So they have to establish themselves and get a, you know, get a good education, get a good job. And I think that's why they postpone marriage. I mean, if a sister, let's say a sister's got a career, but she's open to, you know, um, see, again, it depends now because a lot of men uh, idealize the idea of a woman staying at home. But the reality is that two incomes has become pretty much a necessity for the average everyday household. It's become, especially since women have joined the workforce. Why? Because the value of labor has halved. When women women entered the workforce, the value of labor labor halved. That means two people are doing the work of which one person could do just 50, 60 years ago. Because it's supply and demand. If you double the supply, then you half the demand. So people are making half as much to do, this, to do the, same, the same job. But, you know... If a sister is willing and open and, and malleable and uh, and open to the idea of, yes, I don't mind staying at home if you're able to take care of me, then there's no problem. The, 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 the gripe that brothers have, Hannah, is when sisters go into a sunk cost fallacy state, which is I have spent three, four, five, six, seven years on my education or trying to climb the career ladder. And now you're just telling me to just throw it all away or to just put it on the back burner. That's where the issue of contention comes in. Okay, but I think with the whole um, red pill thing, some men have taken it too far. What I've seen them say, um, I don't even want someone who has a degree, you know, and they disparage that. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I mean, pfft. and it's because they don't have a degree and they're not educated. No, not always. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. You know, it comes down to Allah. I was having this conversation with a brother earlier today. It really comes down to what type of mother modeled behavior for this girl and you can say the same for a man as well what type of father did he have to model the behavior of a man you will learn so much from how from how a girl's mother and father conduct themselves and what's the dynamic of their relationship between each other if she's got a degree if she's got a master's but her mother was feminine and submissive and agreeable yeah. and so on you're not going to have a problem well, you're not going to have a problem. And equally, she can have no, not even a college edu education. She doesn't even have A levels, but she's just an argumentative piece of work. Why? Because that's the environment that she was raised in, that was modeled for her. Are you with me? Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add, Hannah? Um, well, I don't agree with Red Pill, I think. What don't you agree with? I just think it's... By the way, the red pill people have uh, kicked me out, Yani. I am not red pill enough. That's for, good. For these guys, I am too red pill. And for over there, I am not red pill enough. What is it that you don't agree with with the uh, red pill stuff? I don't like the way they talk about women. They turn women into an object. It's about how she looks, which I think we already have enough of that in society. And that's what's corrupting women when they go get surgeries and all these things because it's hyper-focused on their appearance. And that's what red, uh, red pill does as well. Yes, your appearance is important. And furthermore, you do want to be objectified. No, I don't. Of course you do. So let me tell you this. So you you spend, you're married. Well, I know you're not married, but just work with me here. You're married. Your husband's been at work all day long. You've been at home. You, you've, you're looking forward to have a lovely evening with him. You spent the past two hours doing your makeup, making yourself look good. You picked out your favorite dress. It all took long. It was a long time. Okay. You made yourself look absolutely beautiful. Husband walks in. And you're expecting him to notice you. You're expecting him to say something, to appreciate you, to, to point out, mashallah, you've done this with your eyes, and this how it's sitting here on your on your chest, and so on and so forth. And he says, Salaam alaikum, babe, how are you? And you're like, Waalaikum salam, I'm good, babe, alhamdulillah, how are you? And he's like, yeah, I'm good, I'm just going to the toilet. And he says, absolutely nothing with regards to how you look. How do you feel, Hannah? Obviously, I'll be upset. Why? Uh but even if he did say something and uh, complimented me, that's not objectifying me. Of course it is. No, it's not. <laughs> that's what the objectification element is. No, is that objectification. He's, he's not Hold on. He's not appreciating you for you. He's appreciating you for how you look. No, that's not objectification. Objectification is when you reduce a woman to um, how her appearance only and her sexual function. That's not I mean, what husband does to the woman uh, when he yeah, compliments I've, I've her. I've said this before that women want to be objectified. They just don't want to be solely objectified. 
No, she wants... I, I think that's so wrong. Don't say issue... that. Yeah, no, it's the truth. The issue that you have is with the word objectification. But you do want to be objectified, by the way. You just don't want to be objectified exclusively. You want to be appreciated for other things such as love and companionship and so on. But if a man never, if your husband never objectified you, Hannah, you would be living in a state of hell with your husband. No. You absolutely want to be objectified. No. No, you can't take a term and then change it. You can't say, oh, objectification is when you reduce something. You can't say, oh, I'm reducing it, but I'm also not. It doesn't how work like that. How old, how old are you, Hannah? You know how old I am. <laughs> I don't. It's been a year since we spoke. How old are you? Well, I'm one year older. I'm 23 now. Oh, I thought you were 26. And no. how's the marriage process going for you? Not good. Why? Because I'm just not interested. Why? Inshallah soon. When you say you're not interested, is it the men who have put you off or are you put off for other reasons? No, I just I just don't want to put myself out there. Tell me why. Because I don't want to. I'm quite busy right now. Busy with what? <laughs> I'm busy with a lot of things. Yalla, mashallah, if there's a lot of things, then there's a lot of things for you to tell me. What are you busy with? I don't want to say it, but I'm busy and I think I just, for me, it's, I have to put a lot of effort, you know, so effort I, I told my what? dad, so I'm just going to wait. That's how I think. You're busy with what? Are you studying? No, I'm working. You're working. Where do you work? Not you don't have to tell me the place. I'm asking the sector. Beauty? No, I work in education. Uh, you, you work in education. Okay. You're in your prime. You're on the, you're on, you're at the back end of your prime. Do you That's really so want rude. that ship to sail? The truth is, the truth is rude. Sometimes it's rude. You're on the. And this back is this is what I'm saying. Like the whole like, oh, you're in your prime. You're not in your prime. Like you, this is what makes women like go to extreme measures for beauty for ah, all these. Okay. I I don't agree with it. So when is a woman in her prime to you then? Prime in terms of what? Youth and beauty. Which is what men are primarily looking out for, especially the type of man that you want. This when is, is the a kind woman... of thing that makes when men is the woman in her prime? with an 18-year-old when they're like 28. Say that again, sorry? This is the kind of thing the men who think they can, they're can they 28 and they can be with an 18-year-old because I value youth and beauty. When is a woman in her prime? It depends on her. Okay, what does it depend on? Some women, they're, they're not good looking when they're 18, 19, and then, you know, they grow into their facial features and they become more mm -hmm. beautiful at 25, 26. That's true. So that does happen. But there's a key word that you use there. The key word was some. What happens to most women? When are, when are most women in their prime? Whilst in the I would 20s, agree with you, probably. I would say late teens. It's around 18, 19. That's no, when a woman that is, is so strange. <laughs> it's when a woman is in her physical prime, 18, 19. If you don't believe me, have a look at your camera roll. Have a look at the, the texture of your skin. Compare it from then to now and you will see for yourself. And this is what around I mean. 18, the whole like appearance thing, the texture of your skin, like... So you don't like that men place a great emphasis on youth and beauty? No, the thing, youth youth and beauty, I think, is subjective. Like, women are beautiful at different, you know, times. It's absolutely Fertility, not. Subjective. It's absolutely not subjective. It's extremely, it it's extremely objective. Very. And, and, and we're just talking about looks right now. Let's say that there is a woman who does look better at 28 than she did at 18. She had a glow up, okay? Maybe she was just like, like you said, she grew into her features. Okay, but that doesn't change the fact that by 30, which is just two years away, 90% of her eggs are dead. If okay. she hasn't started the baby making, making machine in her 20s, the likelihood of her being able to start it in her 30s dwindles dramatically. We are 50% less fertile, men and women, than the baby, genera baby boomer generation just two generations back. 50% less fertile. If you haven't started that baby making machine in your 20s, trust and believe you're going to have trouble kickstarting that engine in your 30s. Yeah. And that's why I said on, on a previous video, I don't know if you saw it or not, but a woman who reaches the age of 30 and she's still not married and still hasn't reproduced, 90% of her eggs are dead. She's 90% useless. She has 10% of usefulness to the perpetuation of the species. I'm not saying as a person she's useless. I'm not moralizing. She may be a beautiful person. But I'm saying from a reproductive standpoint, she's 90% useless. She's no good. And the thing with you women is that you are born with your value. You know this. You've been here long enough.
It's given to you on a platter for free. The question That's is... That's not true. Of for course. all women. No. The question... Most women. Okay? I think... The question is, what are you going to do with it, Hannah? Okay, for the fertility thing, I think that is objective. Of course, as a woman ages, it's harder for her to have kids and in terms of fertility. But when it comes to, oh, beautiful, then, oh, she's more beautiful when she's 18. To me, There's I just think it's strange. There's a question here. J10 says, what if we don't want kids? A lot of women don't nowadays. This is a great question, J10. The, the answer is very simple. Then she's useless. A woman who doesn't want children, she is, from a reproductive standpoint, useless. She will really be objectified. Because what other use is there? She doesn't have any other use. I can't make a mother out of her. We can't have a family. Well, you're useless. You're utterly useless. Same now, with a man you, who's fertile, uh, infertile. You, he's reproductively useless. <laughs> okay, but you good. see, the thing with a man and a woman is that men are able to be reproductively functional. Sperm declines in quality as we age, by the way. But he's able to be reproductively functional, by and large, well into his 50s and beyond. Because it just takes one sperm from the millions that he has to fertilize the egg. Whereas women are born with a set number of eggs. You are born with it. Bef at birth, you are born with a set number of eggs that release themselves every month once the menstrual cycle kicks in, as you know. Okay, once can I say something, gone. please? Yes, of course. Totally. With the whole um, women have their value when they're born and blah, blah, blah. And the whole youth and beauty thing. I think especially with the social media today, a lot of men think that women are these like beautiful, you know, creatures, which, yeah, the, the top 5% that you see on social media, but most women are just average looking and they're not supermodels. And that's absolutely fine. You see, this is the thing no, with it's men. it's not when you talk about things like, oh, the it's... texture of their skin. Some women have acne. Some. Do you see what exactly. you're doing again? And what you do is you insult those women. Here, here, you Hannah, bring Hannah. their value down. Most, you women, beautiful. most women who are in their youth just simply by virtue of their youth, they are attractive, even if they're average. That's the beauty of youth. Even if you're an average looking woman, which is what most women are, just as most men are, by virtue of your youth alone, you have options. You right now, you're 23 years old. You have options. You have a privilege that is invisible to you. Because you've always ever been young, you don't actually realize what is on the horizon for you, Hannah. You don't realize what's in the future because you, all you've ever known is youth. But that ship is sailing and you must decide what you're going to do with it before it sails. You're on this channel and have been on this channel on and off for the past year for a reason. Something resonates with you, even if you disagree with certain things that you hear. Clearly something resonates with you, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Yeah, I left with the whole red pill thing. And because I, I realized that it's just... it's. I just don't agree with it at all. But yeah, you're right. And I think in the beginning, when I watched your content, it made me realize, okay, I need to take marriage seriously and not focus too much on the career. Mm. But when you, I don't like it, the whole red pill thing, when they reduce women and objectify them. And now you see Muslim men talking about women like that. It doesn't, matter, it doesn't, matter, like it doesn't matter what you like, Hannah. You've got to deal with reality. Do you understand that? It does not matter what you like. Do you know what men don't like? Men don't like being reduced to bank accounts. Men hate it. They hate the fact that they have to bring a certain uh, financial level to the table before women will consider them. Women en masse consider men en masse to be socioeconomically un not viable. The majority of women, hence why by 2030, 45% of all prime-aged working women, that is between the age of 25 to 44, will be single and childless because they think that most men are not socioeconomically viable. They don't earn enough money. Yeah. Do you know what we have to do with that thing that we don't like, Hannah? We deal with it. And I say to you the exact same thing. If you don't like the fact that men prioritize youth and beauty, that's okay. Deal with it. And for you specifically, you are, st you are still in your prime. Fine, you're at the back end of your prime, but you're still there. Oh. You have options available to you. You are not one who should be complaining. I should be having this discussion with a 33-year-old sister my age or a 43-year-old sister. But not you. Mm, well. <laughs> TikTok. So if you like that clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.